Hey guys, what's up? Hope all is going well and you're well today. And today we are doing a Photoshop tutorial on how to create, bam, this image right here. Um, if you guys have been to my website, alexbrinkley.com, you probably recognize this. And I decided to kind of make it a little bit cooler and um, create it as a desktop background. Um, so anyways, for this, you don't need Photoshop, but any really, real, really any photo editing software will do the trick. Um, you just need layers, some drop shadows, um, an eraser, a selection tool, and just some basic stuff. But anyways, with that being said, let's jump right in. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop CS4, if you guys are wondering. Um, and like I showed you guys earlier, this is kind of my like, my banner for my website. Um, anyways, the first thing we want to do is we want to create this sort of what the spotlight is shining on, kind of the backdrop. Um, you guys can go to Google and type in some cool graphics. Um, for example, sheet metal, like that's how I found this one. Just do sheet metal texture. And then go to images. And then over here where it says any size, just hit the large size. And this will filter out all the images so you can only see like the ones that are super HD and everything. Um, another cool one might be bricks. Or some cool water stuff. You know, whatever you guys like. Um, I got this cool one um, of the of the sheet metal I got showed you guys earlier. Um, just copy that and then paste that onto a new layer in your um, editing software, and then bring that layer below everything else. Let's drag it around. All right there, looks pretty cool. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the um, graphics, the image, the text, whatever's in the center, make sure that it's centered. Um, so I kind of I'm pretty sure mine's centered. But a good way to make sure is just say like, okay, the height is 15 here. That means the center part of the image should be at, should be at um, seven and a half. So seven and a half is right there, and you make sure that the center of this thing is lined up right there. And you can kind of see on Photoshop we have a little um, handy dandy marker thing. Anyways, um, the width of this is 26 and two thirds. I know that from earlier. Um, so that means you want to be about 13 and a third. So again, see where that is. I know it's about 13 and a half, so just bring it down back a little bit. Check the up and down again. All right, that looks pretty good. I like that. Uh, for tutorial purposes, you know it's gonna work. Now let's make a new layer and put that below your image or your text, whatever you have, but above this layer. And let's just create a black solid over everything. Alright, so now we've done that, come over here and hit the elliptical marquee tool. Um, whatever you guys have in your program, I'm sure it will work. It just has to be kind of a tool that can do this and select many things. Anyways, um, let's select a pretty tight selection around the, um, the graphic or the text, whatever you guys got. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight, but it will help. Um, about right there is straight. Alright, and now before we do anything, we have to come up here and do the refine edge tool. Um, also make sure the layer is selected if, it, um, if that option is not available. So we find edge, and then probably your biggest tool is going to be your feathering tool. This is what's going to make it like really nice and feathery, as you can see along the edges here, and kind of give that blending effect. So anyways, make sure that's pretty up there. Um, there's no real like magic number set. Um, just play with these sliders, see what works for you. Um, I don't know. Something like that looks pretty good. And once we're done, just hit OK, and then hit the Delete button. And then, as you can see, it creates a pretty cool effect. Um, I'm going to delete it, um, do select that. And yeah, that's pretty much all that there is to it. Um, a couple things that you can do to really make it extra poppy, or you know, make the graphic or the text, whatever you have, pop out a little more, is to come over here and then add a drop shadow. Um, just to, go, um, to come to the Layer Styles menu, just double click on the layer. And then it should be the first option in CS4. Um, it might be different for CS5 or anything um, above that. Um, but play with the distance, see what looks cool for you. Um, I just so often find that with multiply, 75, um, you know, the angles, whatever. But for the distance and size and spread, it's like 20, 0, and 6 is what I found works um, well for me. But, you know, definitely go ahead and experiment around with that. I'm going to do the same thing for the Alex Brinkley part of it. So anyways, that's been this tutorial. Um, remember that this um, sort of concept cannot just be applied to a photo. 
This would also be um, applied to something in motion, like Apple's motion or um, Adobe's After Effects. Um, this can be used to create some cool video kind of effect um, for some 3D graphics for a DVD intro or, you know, an intro to a YouTube person or whatever. Um, it, it's pretty powerful, and I think it kind of cool, gives a cool spot-like 3D um, theatrical effect going on. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button up top. Um, I'm making more of these. Um, also, check us out on Facebook, facebook um, facebook.com slash medievalhollywood. Um, and then be updated every time I upload a new video. Anyways, that is all, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you later.